Welcome and good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Today we are here to share artist talks from the Living Systems Art and Design Collaboratory. This new program presented by the Design Studio and the Emergent Media and Design Lab at the University of California, Irvine, provides funding for artists and designers to support the development of creative projects that explore living systems. And we are currently broadcasting live to our uh, two of our community partners, uh, Gray Area and Burners Without Borders. Hello, community. Uh, we are also broadcasting live to the Buckland Stuckler Institute community. And we are here today uh, with 30 artists uh, from all over the world. And we will be going through parts of their uh, initiatives that they're running uh, and they're all they've been in this program now for about four weeks many of them are part of the design science studio which has been running since July um, and all of the collaboratory members uh, have been working to design projects that aid people in perceiving the biological cognitive social ecological, philosophical, spiritual, mathematical, political, and technological dimensions of life as a unified whole as inspired by living systems. And for the members of the collaboratory who are a part uh, of this, they are uh, supported by a community of mentors. And these mentors uh, are coming from many parts of they're the world and they have incredible skills and so we're so honored to have such an incredible team uh, supporting this initiative. Uh, the Design Science Studio, uh, which is the studio that many of the collaboratory members are a part of, uh, is a program of the Buckminster Fuller Institute and Habitual. The creative outputs of this decade-long anticipatory art and design driven accelerator for revolutionary creators articulates a world that works for 100% of life. Uh, it promotes the power of art and design as a cross-cultural language for systemic change with the mission of guiding and empowering voices that believe a better world is possible. And the Design Science Studio is designed to help engineer new visions of what's possible in partnership with thought leaders, organizations, and initiatives working for a future that is regenerative and just, which is why we are working with the Emergent Media and Design Lab <clears throat> at the University of California and also our other creative partners. And we are so inspired that this initiative of the collaboratory uh, is a part of this greater mission. Um, Back Mr. Fuller used to say that, or one of his most famous quotes is that we are prepared and ready and have everything we need to make the world work for 100% of life in the shortest possible time through a spontaneous cooperation without ecological offense or the disadvantage to anyone. And we love to focus on, especially on the part of through a spontaneous cooperation. Uh, Fuller was one of the most impressive thinkers of last century, and he really understood that we are a living system. Um, so that's why with the program, we're really, really uh, looking forward to uh, promote all these incredible students and just give, help them find their balance to, to find their, their true vision and passion and, and create uh, better ecosystems. Uh, that's what we are here, just trying to, to explain the complexity and nonlinearity of our world. Um, and so, um, we just want to welcome you to this Living Systems Collaboratory. Uh, you're about to see uh, a bunch of the projects that we're brewing, that the students in there are cooking and preparing, and I'm pretty sure that we will blow your mind in the next two hours. So welcome. Welcome. And I have the pleasure of introducing our first artist, who is Lawrence Curry-Clark. He is a game designer. And uh, welcome, Lawrence. Hello everybody, my name is Lawrence Curry-Clark and I'm delighted as part of the Design Science Studio 
and the Living Systems Art and Design Collaboratory to present to you my project, Atlas, the Game of Planetary Sovereignty. A playground for all to play on. A playground that brings the land back to the people, that gives a little parcel of the earth back to all. This is the software H3 by Uber, which they use to calculate the different trips and the prices. This open source software can be used to generate a new playground. As you can see on the left hand side, in this small hexagon, we have, for example, Fell Street, where I might live. This hexagon becomes my local playground, in which it is my responsibility to take care of this little parcel of the earth. If we move to the second image, we can see that my little corner of the earth is also part of many smaller hexagons and even smaller hexagons breaking down the earth into the hyperlocal but also reaching up all the way to the global scale and with this playground we can interconnect the various levels participate in regenerative games to reclaim sovereignty over where we live, to reclaim the commons, to reclaim governance. This is how Uber uses their software to calculate who is moving from whom, where is activity the highest. This is how Atlas uses the software. It represents which areas need to be regenerated and which areas are already well regenerated. It also has cool features like neighborhood rings where you can visualize the hexagons which are near you. And in so doing, they're all in kinds of interesting ways to generate relationships between your neighbors. Good progress has been made during the process of the collaboratory of finding an open source iteration of this playground where we can visualize all the different resolutions increasing higher and higher, covering larger and larger areas. And I'm also happy to announce that through the collaboratory, we found somebody to collaborate with, with Kiki and her Hypergroove group. That's my presentation. If you'd enjoy it, if you're inspired, please get in touch. Thank you, Lawrence and such a wonderful um, moment to celebrate with you about the collaboratory working for you to find fellow people to collaborate with. We're so honored to have you. Thanks for tuning in from Germany and uh, you're amazing. <laughs> so uh, next up, we are joined from Ruta Dante. Ruta, you're gonna have to help me. I'm so sorry, I just slaughtered your last name. She is an imaginator exploring how ideas become memes. She is a magician. Com uh, she's looking for um, magician, comedian, comics creator to get feedback on her antidotes and living systems. Uh, Ruta, welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, yes. And mm -hmm. Mutant means a change, and it means. Uh, uh, a mutant, and Mutanto is an invitation uh, to learn the language of we. It is also a comic uh, story about uh, personal transformation and living systems. And uh, the story is about um, creative energy, the same energy that, uh, well, brings life to every everything in universe. Uh, so it's about creative energy hacking the human so that the human becomes uh, a part of living systems and a living uh, system itself. 
and uh, this human starts to sort of like breed ideas that uh, shape the future of Earth in a positive way. And the book looks like this. Um, uh, it's my prototype here. And the book is filled with uh, self-help jokes uh, for people who are on the personal transformation journey. It also has the basics of science uh, about uh, living systems and uh, why they matter in our lives. And what does it mean, actually, when we think about living systems um, in today's world? Um, and my book is actually uh, designed for loves. It's, it doesn't have any facts and uh, it has instead uh, comics uh, for coloring time and it has reflection prompts uh, for writing inside. And more so, it's designed to fit any pocket so that this book would become um, the sort of best friend for people who are on the journey of searching who they are in this uh, connected world and so that the book could capture the aha moments. And the book uh, uh, has an imaginary conversation between uh, life forms, uh, such as universe, earth, uh, body, mind, uh, tree, uh, fungi, bacteria, and a robot. And uh, the book is filled also with spells that help people to a friend imagination. Um, and this is like a prototype how my book would look like. Uh, the pages would have on one side um, the comic uh, about living systems. So imagine that this square is actually a comic. And on the other side, it will have an anecdote uh, or a poem about... Uh, personal transformation and living systems. And at, at the bottom, you will see a writing prompts um, that help people to reflect on uh, what these concepts and sort of like what these jokes mean to them in their lives. And what I'm looking for is uh, for people to come to my website, mutanto.world, and uh, click this red button and subscribe uh, for my updates, uh, because having an audience actually is the best one motivator to ship creative projects. And also you can see my progress if you click the button, give me feedback. Also, I'm looking for, uh, yeah, connect with magicians, comedians, and comic book authors. I would love to sort of uh, um, explore ideas how it is best to uh, describe complex science in a funny way um, and also I'm looking for funding to get uh, this book printed and bring it to people's lives and just like to tell you a last thing about my journey uh, when I joined the living systems collaboratory um, I just uh, had the name actually I, I Mutantu and I, I knew that I want to somehow express this idea that uh, coexistence matters um, and then during these few weeks um, I'm so happy that actually I just reached the synthesis stage and then I have my prototype, which is my website. Uh, and then like, I imagine now how my book would look like and um, uh, why I'm doing this, al doing this also. And um, uh, my next steps uh, would be a storyboard and then uh, writing and drawing. Uh, so that's it for me. Remember to come back to motanto.world enjoy my tribe of uh, becoming a mutant well, thanks so much thank you Jutha. Uh, it's so good to see how you're weaving in humor and imagination as we bridge to a we mindset uh, so we're so happy to have had the opportunity to learn more about your project and you've made so much progress so with that i will introduce gina bria uh, with all of the pleasure in my heart. She is an anthropologist, founder of the Hydration Foundation, collaborator on A Movement in Water, a mobile water immersive museum. She's working on integrating living systems, finding our own bodies as water systems, and personal transformation. Welcome, Gina. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you, uh, Living Systems Collab. I'm going to share my screen and put you through an experience. Let's see. Gina, you unshared your screen by mistake. Would you please reshare your screen? Okay, you. let me try. Let's see. Oh dear. I found I think I found it. All right. How's that? That's perfect. Here it comes. Get ready.
That's my collaborator, Maxie Cohen. She's a brilliant film artist. And A Movement in Water, this project is a mobile water museum planned to pop up in cities and exhibition spaces around the world. It's a sort of mobile cathedral of water. Let me share some newly uncovered discoveries about water. Water molecules are the fastest information transfer system now known, far faster than silicon. Indeed, the next generation of quantum computing will be modeled on water molecules. We are stunned by what's being uncovered about water molecules. Indeed, water is the most extensive living system, touching all other living systems the mother of life. Humans, by molecular count, are 99% water because the water molecule is so small by volume. So we are, by water molecular count, 99% water. We are living water beings. We are already capable of quantum computing. And with the movement in water, we intend to create a space for new understandings of ourselves as walking water beings and to let water lead us to find new capacities in ourselves to be fully water, fully water beings, to discover capacities about ourselves we didn't know we possessed and to be fully capable of making our new fully living systems of future. So we express the desire to, through spontaneous collaboration with you, create and fund this movement in water, water computer, water cathedral, living water system to enter into. Follow us at a movementinwater.com. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you, Design Studio. Thank you for being spontaneous collaborators. Thank you, Dina, for your passion and your dedication to this planet and to this mother element. I'm just so honored to be on this journey together. Yeah. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing Akiko Ogawa, an artist and design technologist who works with biomimicry and the collective intelligence of bees and mycelium. Hi everyone, thank you. Um, so during the Living Systems Collaboratory, um, I attempted to understand what was emerging from the space of chaos um, within our technological and biological systems. And one thing I found in common was that information is present everywhere in our technological and biological systems in the form of DNA, data, binary, zeros and ones. And knowing this, I wanted to further explore what the minimum protocols are for collective intelligence between communities, for points of collaboration and planetary scale restoration. The key question was how can we use our network, network connectivity, information, data and machine intelligence for the good of humanity and our planet? How can we work together to heal our lands and communities? The incubator phase led me to understand the interdisciplinary framework involving biological metaphors and um, technological systems. So what evolved was my understanding of how local communities can scale its efforts globally using these theoretical frameworks as a heuristic. Um, moving on to the development phase, I will be collaborating with Lawrence in order to understand how we can gamify the commons to incentivize collaboration, cooperation, and to map these communities using location-based information and um, on the biomimicry principles that I will be following. Um, and we would love to partner with innovative community builders, designers, artists, com computer data scientists, 
and software engineers to draft a proof of concept prototype. So let's discover, create, prototype, and um, implement together. Thank you. Thank you, Akiko. You are so intelligent. And <laughs> I'm always <laughs> so impressed every time we talk. Uh, and you have really been taking this uh, so I won't say seriously, but like you can really feel the passion that you have and you have been a super connector yourself, really weaving in the mycelial network of the community and so much is flourishing uh, and uh, you are an inspiration. So thank you. Thank you so much, Roxy. Thanks. Uh, next up, I will be sharing a video from one of the artists, Carlota Aun. She is a techno abstract artist who works with techno mutations, distortions, and futures. And she's working on future ways of breathing, exploring symbiotic action as a social experiment. My name is Carlota. I am an artist who studies techno mutations, distortions, and speculative futures. My project is called Symbiotic Experiment for Future Ways of Breathing. It's a performance that uses the audience's virtual interaction to control the air supply of the artist that is on the other side of the screen. Together, we create a hybrid breath, a language that teaches us to breathe within digital interfaces. The artist will only be equipped with a gas mask and an oxygen supply. The audience will be prompted to breathe into the microphone of their devices and their breath will be judged by an AI and depending on its judgment the system will let air out of the tank. The performance is subjected to the unpredictability of the audiences and the AI's decision making. It seeks to extrapolate a symbiotic living system from the organic function of breathing and the essential technologies that allow us to exist in the virtual dimension. The performance was first thought to happen in physical space. The trigger for oxygen release would have been the use of social media and selfie culture, but it was deemed unconvincing. And due to the pandemic, the performance was rethought as a live stream. The incubation period has allowed me to rethink the trigger, exploring a deeper relationship for this living system, a new language, truly hybrid and symbiotic based on breath. AI was also a big part of the change. It highlights the human biases behind digital tech, our flaws and the power of ancestral intelligence. In the first month, I also consulted physicians and diving experts on danger, safety measures and proper equipment. Right now, I'm working on the possibilities of AI implementation. And after facing some technical difficulties doing it on my computer, I understood that its best use resides in existing structures. I am thus reaching out to startups and universities interested in backing up projects that explore the idea of AI for good. Before the end of the month, I expect to collaborate with an existing AI platform and define the human bias. How can we categorize a good and a bad breath? In January, I will need to train the AI, teach the interface how to breathe, and teach myself how to breathe through the interface, create an interactive interface that triggers an analog reaction, and start a process archive to learn how to breathe within the technoscape. By the end of January, I expect to have a first functional prototype to be fine-tuned in the following phase. Thank you for your support and for your time. so grateful <clears throat> and fascinated by this project uh, at the intersection of AI, our breath, which obviously there's the breath of the earth and the one of my favorite living systems metaphors uh, when studying Gaian systems theory was learning that when you zoom out far enough and look at the entirety of the earth and when we when we went to space, we confirmed that the earth is a supra organism and so life regulates life. And during this time of the pandemic, this uh, project has so many active threads and weaves 
so much of this together in our present moment. Thank you, Carlota. Next, we have artist, creative director, and immersive designer, Olivia Gwetling. Olivia, you're going to have to teach me your last name, too. I'll get it. Uh, she <laughs> is, will you do it for me? I want to say it right. It's Gutling. Gutling. Olivia Gutling. Uh, and she is working on a very unique structure for a retreat center and a land-based project. Welcome, Olivia. Thanks. Um, so welcome. Um, my project is called The Seed, which is a structure that resides on my retreat center, the Alchemy Center. Seeds birth life, and so does the living universe and just about anything on this planet, and so do places. Today, I want you to imagine a place of abundance. This is the Alchemy Center. The Alchemy Center is using a framework that is allowing people to spend time pondering, playing, daydreaming, and practicing. And these four quadrants translate into these 12 satellites that actually hold space for you to enter these states of consciousness. If you put this framework on a land project like the Alchemy Center, we end up having a very clear idea of the programming for all the structures and facilities on site. Right now, we are going to look at the center structure, which is designed to capture all the movement that people are making as they move from place to place. And inside this building is a structure called the seed. And the seed is a literal lattice that is capturing all this movement. It is a labyrinth that allows people moving through this experience. The seed is in the basement level of the structure, um, which is a labyrinth and it's grounded just like a seed. And as people, people are moving through these different rooms and through this labyrinth, they enter into what we wanna call the world, AKA a venue for celebration, for dancing, for all kinds of things. And as people are, again, entering this venue, they are in this glass floor that allows them to always look back at where they came from. And um, these different rooms in this um, labyrinth are reflection rooms that are mirroring everything that's happening on site. And everything that's happening on site is inspiring the projections in these rooms. This is an example from a prototype that I've been working on for the last three years in a context of a conference. So imagine projection mapping and many other things. And then as you come out, you enter a place for celebration. So what is next? Um, the um, Alchemy Center is a massive project that requires a lot of work. And uh, we have a very concise timeline that helps us keep on track. And we're also talking to all kinds of people to bring this place into reality. And the seed is this crucial part of the Alchemy Center. And within this collaboratory, I will be developing the experience strategy for the seed. I will be finding partners to grow the seed. Are you one of those? Let me know. And I will also be developing scalable seed structures as offerings for other land projects. If this inspires you and you wanna play, let me know and email me and thank you very much. Thank you, Olivia, for creating structures that support so many creators and for all the progress that you've already made and woven with the entire community. This is a blueprint and an inspiration. And thank it's a you. to see you. Wouldn't thank be you. possible without the community. Yeah. Together we can. Yay. Yay. <laughs> uh, next, I have the pleasure of introducing a pre-recorded video from one of our artists coming to us from Germany, Ilaria Forte. She is a regenerative futurist, cognitive scientist, and disruptive innovator. She's working on this Project ER Plus, regenerating the unity of the mind body environment, applied systems philosophy using immersive technologies, interactive art experiences for catalyzing healing. Uh, it is good to know that this project is in motion with many private um, hospital institutions and it is experimenting with how, how does our living system help to heal our well-being.
deep breath. Inspiring. Even though I may be the director of the Design Science Studio, I am so blown away by all of these artists every single day. So we have come to a moment where you are welcome to take a breath, take a pause. Uh, we're going to be welcoming another group of artists in that will begin to share presentations in just three short minutes. So if you need to grab a glass of water or take a bio break, now's the time, but don't go for long. And we'll be right back with you. Thank you. If you're just joining us, we will be live in two short minutes with our next round of artist presentations.
Hello and welcome back. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are enjoying artist talks from the Living Systems Art and Design Collaboratory. Uh, this program is providing funding for artists and designers to support the development of creative projects that are exploring living systems. Next artist that will be presenting is Brandy Lee. She is a dancer and UCI MFA student. She's exploring healing through living systems philosophy. A whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Welcome, Brandy. Thank you so much, Roxy, and good morning, everyone. Last February, I tore my meniscus in two places during a performance. My doctor initiated the healing process with a platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, injection. He explained that by injecting my knee with my own blood cells, it would signal to my body that I was newly injured, resulting in a rush of new blood cells and, importantly, new meniscus tissue growth in the affected area. Miraculously, I've been dancing ever since. More tragically, my mother's sister suddenly passed away on last Christmas Eve. Aunt Jackie was a pillar of the family who tagged me with my mother to care for their elderly parents. When Aunt Jackie passed uh, away, my Uncle Bobby moved in with my grandparents to assist my mom with their care. This summer, Uncle Bobby was diagnosed with terminal stage four pancreatic cancer, while my grandfather was diagnosed with an aggressive form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Last month, my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. My mother has suddenly been left holding the reins over all these affairs from managing meals, chemotherapy treatments and medications to managing my grandparents' household. A few weeks ago, my mom and I discovered our dear Aunt Loretta lifeless in her home. My mother has had to manage an immeasurable amount of turbulence in a very short amount of time. Two collaboratory ideas helped me realize how these two scenarios involving my knee and my family were related. That all members of nonlinear networks implement their assets in cooperation and partnership to achieve the long-term goals of the whole network, creating a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. And the human body is living systems metaphor, looking inwards to understand what's outside. Through the lens of the living systems philosophy, I see my knee injury and healing process as a metaphor of the way my family came together in a crisis. I see my grandparents, uncle, and mother as the meniscus of my knee and each family member as the rush of fresh blood cells that organically organize themselves around the most vulnerable in our midst. I have seen through each phase of challenge how my family has implemented non-linear strategies, becoming ever stronger with a whole that is greater than the sum of the parts. While here at the collaboratory, I'm working on a screen dance that will introduce the audience to a family. A crisis ensues, they overcome. When we pull back and take a wider macro view, the audience sees how we've been inside of the injured, healing, healed me the entire time. Today, I am asking for your feedback and possible support around graphic design and video editing ideas to allow this project to have maximum impact. My desired outcome is to empower others to shift to nonlinear thinking, especially during crisis or chaos, when perhaps the inclination to cling to traditional linear thinking is strongest. This crucial shift can be ultimately regenerative and life-sustaining. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Brandy, and thank you for modeling how we can take our personal life experiences and translate them into something that empowers so many. Thank it is you. wonderful to have you in the collaboratory. We're so grateful. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Amazing. So next up, we will hear from Susan Coach. She is an artist, certified UX designer, researcher, an information architect, classical animator, macrobiotic cook, and chief imagination officer, enriched by code. She's working on the revenge of Rona, or the vengeance of the bad medicine. Greetings. This is a three-minute TED Talk. 
This three-minute TED Talk will be done through a black screen with only the sound of my voice and the spelling of my name. Newsflash, linear visual culture powered by the German Gutenberg Press, printing press is dead. Acoustic space is electrifying and was coined by media theorist, media theorist Marshall McLuhan. Both McLuhan and I are grateful to be born and raised under open prairie skies. These skies and the sky people that inhabit them bless us. With the artistic perception of time and space, significance and meaning, acoustic space evokes for me the sound of a beaded moccasin as it thuds down on the tall prairie grasses for a buffalo harvest in the Temple of the Sun. These are the lands of the sacred buffalo and the buffalo peoples. Long may they run. Acoustic space references the inner landscape. It pays homage to poets. So I will also call in the great dub poets and DJs of Jamaica in this overview. I spell my name using a dash between the two syllables. This separates the SU from the SAN. SU is short for system user. The word San is borrowed from the Japanese language and means to honor someone. In this spelling of my name, the system user is honored. My last name is Kosh. It is a German name that means cook or Kuch. Since cooking, cooking is what sustains me by nourishing my body, mind, and soul, my family name fits me well. Many have tasted my food and lived to tell about it. At one point, I was a macrobiotic chef at the Organic Buddha in Toronto. Prior to that, I set up my two fast food vegetarian restaurants, one in Vancouver and the other in I set up two fast food restaurants and the other in Toronto. Besides being a good macrobiotic cook, I'm an artist and information architect. My project for the Design Science Studio is Bucky's Mutual Aid Network, BMA, BMAM for short. This is like a Tinder for projects and communities, connecting them to individuals in a synergistic way. The BMAM project is about community and content. BMAM will include a market for cool things my cohorts might want to list, from scrappy pants to a 3D virus mask to a game called Cajado. This mutual aid network will be fully developed over the next decade in order to help the f- help flood in order to help flood the world with new ideas and concepts. Bucky's Miso Soup Kitchen is the conceptual heart of the mutual aid network because food is the staff of life. As fate would have it, Bucky had good friends who were Japanese. Kudos. It will be a mobile app free available for a fee from the B-Man site and from both Apple and Android store app stores. The mashup content created through characters that inhabit Bucky's Miso Soup Kitchen might just spin off into an animated film over the next five years. Merchandise printed with cool one-liners like on guard, protect your body temple so that no virus can flourish within it, can also be purchased on the B-Man site. The, pur- the purpose of this app is to reframe the ontology of wellness in the form of a bundle of concepts seen through a living system's lens to shift the notion of health from a single event like the covid 19 vaccine to that of living the big life. If you want to learn more about the ontology for Bucky's Miso Soup Kitchen, come to my 12-minute talk on Saturday. See you soon. Thank you. So fun to have a presentation that's just audio in a time when we're so visual and inundated with more and more and more. Uh, it's so refreshing also to have another project uh, that is speaking on how health is the greatest wealth and helping us to reframe the ontology of wellness. Thank you, Susan. Next, 
we hear from Stephen Bow, a social architect who's reimagining our social architecture, learning what is the environment that we need to manifest our collective intelligence. Stephen has become a dear friend through the studio and is on a lifelong mission as an educator and a collaborator. And it is such an honor to be here with you today. Take it away, Stephen. Thank you, Roxy. So I'm Stephen Bao, a social architect, and I'm a founder of the Builders Collective. We're reimagining our social architecture and exploring how we imagine, design, and build the future together. So with a little psychological priming, I want to tell you a story about the genesis of the living systems on this planet in terms of design iterations. So the first design iteration came about uh, through a three-day process or a, a three-stage design process that ended off with vegetative life. The next iteration produced sentient life. The next iteration produced a nation. The next iteration was a world-building process. And now we find ourselves in a world where we're experiencing multiple systemic crises at the same time, biological, personal, social, economic, political, and ecological. Well, 100 years ago, the same thing happened, and the Bauhaus came together, gathering artists and scientists and architects from around the world to reimagine what the modern world could look like. And we're living in that world now. But we're back in the same place where we are experiencing all of these systemic crises at the same time again. So what if we could reframe our stories in terms of how we have been building living system or physical ar artifacts, but we're evolving towards um, imagining what our living systems could look like. So we create change by transcending the helplessness of the individual by embracing the power of the collective, a creative, collaborative, self-organizing learning community. And my project is specifically looking at the idea of metaphysical gravity and how we can navigate uh, our trajectory with Spaceship Earth. Because we are molecules, cells, uh, the living cities and systems of our social systems uh, rotating around a planet that is circling a galaxy. And we are part of a holobiont, a network that is evolving over time from survivalistic to holistic ways of thinking. And we are becoming more aware of our motivations and how our connections to each other are so important for the existence of life on this planet. So how do we understand human experience and how love is metaphysical gravity? So I would invite you to be part of the story of love, overcoming the power of empire and exploring how uh, we can be part of the, the new social architecture. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for modeling <laughs> in both the way that you show up and very visibly a, a path in a new way. It's deeply inspiring, and you are definitely living your namesake, whether you meant to or not. Stephen Bow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Next, we have Jess DeVille, who I met Jess when I first moved to the Bay Area. We My second day on... Uh, in the in the in the new place that I was living in San Francisco, we uh, worked on a creative project together, and it's so good to be reconnected and to seeing to see how you're thriving, continuing to be as a, as you are a creative producer and a choreographer. Uh, it's been so fascinating uh, to follow your company that you founded, Open House Aesthetics, uh, Athletics, uh, a collection of entertainers and educators that are offering site-specific performances, classes, activations, installations, and storytelling adventures at the intersection of art and environmentalism. Jess will be sharing with us today about eco-embodiment, a learning lab, uh, exploring lore and landscape through adventure storytelling and site-specific dance. 
Thank you for the way that you engage the creative community and have continued to do performances throughout the pandemic. You are amazing. Jess, take it away. Thanks so much for having me, Roxy and uh, Design Science Studio. Um, so my project for the Living Systems Collaboratory is a hybrid outdoor and online curriculum for creative movers and critical thinkers, inviting participants to understand each outdoor venue's unique biocultural makeup, uh, excavate their own personal mythologies through adventure storytelling and site-specific dance. I'm hoping to work directly with STEAM schools, uh, senior homes, land projects, and event producers to build immersive educational experiences for all ages. So the experience works like this. We begin and end each storytelling adventure at the Tree of Life, exploring inner and outer landscapes to distinguish concepts of home, heritage, and identity. This is a little snapshot of us in action, photographed by beautiful friend and collaborator through Design Science Studio, Thais Aquino. Um, so my online platform will be used in COVID-friendly remote sessions, and they will incorporate 360-degree dance films, guided meditations, and exploratory missions that are themed around how our identities are formed and informed by both our natural environments and their associated mythologies. The live social distance field studies occur with dancers in remote locations to research and create the content that's necessary to drive the online platform and reinforce classroom lessons. I had the privilege of prototyping the experience in a subtropical rainforest alongside a diverse curated group of dancers which included a sociologist who is a hip hop and contemporary dancer, an African dancer who has a PhD in environmental engineering and a traditional Indian folkloric dancer who doubles as a middle school educator. We spent a ton of time um, going through our transpersonal exercises and prompts, choreographic interventions and improv games using the body as a metaphor to explore the history of an environment affecting our potential to change its future and what our non-human elders can teach us about designing our own personal mythologies. The process of mapping our relationship to the land is often called using choreography as cartography. And I'm interested in how we can use these practices to find our way, both literally and figuratively, as well as how we can share these understandings, traditional environmental knowledge back with our greater community. So adventure storytelling, I chose this uh, medium because it teaches us about our own capacity. And this is one of my favorite quotes by Terence McKenna, uh, which says, nature loves courage. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall, and this is how magic is done. This is an example of some of the work that we've been doing together and some responses, um, her folks heralding our 360, I hope you can see. And I just wanna give a quick yeah, shout out yeah. to our contributors, um, Thais, Sonia, Joy, Gia, who helped me with the land and are also helping me for fun tech support. Thanks so much. Jess, um, if there was one more thing you want to share, it was only showing your slide. So, oh, no. yeah, just wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, make sure the right thing was on the screen. How wild. Yeah, it's on the first slide of Open House Athletics. Hmm. Okay. There we go. That's moving now. Great. Looks beautiful, perfect, now we can see it. Ah, uh, thank you. So I'll just kind of flip through these rather quickly, I guess.
And I just want to say again, I'm so appreciative to Design Science Studio, the Buckminster Fuller Institute, um, the Living Systems Collaboratory, and all involved for including me in this brilliant process. This last slide is how you can contact me. I can be found on Instagram at Open House Athletics or Deville Dance underscore co. Thank you, Jess. I'm so glad we got to see those. Choreography as cartography. We have so much uh, wisdom in our bodies and especially now people are spending more and more time inside, disconnected. And we know that that's such a root of so, so many of the problems that we have is our disconnection with ourselves, our greater intuition and our beautiful mm -hmm. living world. So thank you for shepherding and stewarding such an incredible participatory project. It's so beautiful to be collaborating with you here. Thank you. Next up, we have Helena Sheridan, a future strategist and impact creator who's working on establishing a new model of success. What does success look like in 2030, especially in the developing world? Thank you for tuning in with us today, Helena. I know you're on the other side of the planet and thank you for the work that you're doing. Good evening, everybody, and um, welcome to my brain. This that you're looking at is a snapshot of my working mirror board for the project exploring a new model of success for small circular communities, specifically in the post-apartheid South African landscape. Um, and uh, to generate income opportunities in this harsh economic climate with very low to no barriers to entry. Uh, so enter Fun Plastic. Oh, all that. Fun Plastic. What is Fun Plastic? It is a uh, community arts initiative focused on cleaning up the environment while generating income opportunities, repurposing single uh, use plastics into useful products, things that the community can sell, build with, make public art and infrastructure to further the message and elevate their spaces. Um, where it's at at the moment, we established a non for profit company called Platform, through which we're doing the project. We're developing a structure or a working model for a successful circular community. We're building relationships within our chosen community in Greiten, Genordendal, and we're drawing up contracts with local black economic empowerment businesses in order to secure funding and sponsorship while at home and with all our friends just collecting pretty colorful plastics and building a small shredder. Our aspirations is uh, to create a sense of urgency for changing our ways and our waste, to install pride in the very essential services of recycling and to pay a living wage to all involved. We want to usher in a new model of success for a circular community that benefits 100% of its life. We are facilitating, uh, looking to facilitate a space where South Africans can work and play together to break down uh, barriers that have been established by generations of segregation. And we want to design products with a very small carbon footprint to solve the problems of our time through a combination of our ancestral knowledge and the best of modern day technology. We, uh, the minimal viable uh, outcomes that I'm looking for at the moment is besides the fun plastic framework and a working model for collaboration with the transition town that is operational in our targeted community. We want to make, set up contracts with uh, black economic empowerment commitments. We want to get a few solid letters of intent from future clients and hopefully some funding. But as a ta tangible work of art to convey the message and spread, spread the word, I also want to use plastic waste that has been found in the Cape Floral Kingdom to create an artwork that represents one or two fungus plant species that are currently completely extinct in the wild due to urban sprawl and human intervention in order to wake people up to the dangers of our ways and our waste. We're looking for funding. We're currently running a small uh, crowdfunding campaign to get off the ground. And uh, $1 or euro goes a very long way in South African rands. 
um, in, uh, and we're also, um, I'm just looking for sort of inspiration or ideas, images, ways to create these unique plants with plastic waste in an aesthetically pleasing and eye-catching way. Or just any thoughts that have been sparked by this short presentation that I've stumbled through. You can reach me on that email address and I say thank you very much and bye Dante. Thank you, Helena, for sparking so much in your communities, for paving the way for circular economies and for making art that helps translate and embody these messages. It's an honor for us to have you with us and we feel like we're a big global hug knowing that you're on the other side of the world in South Africa, paving the way for so many. Thank you. Thanks, Roxy. <laughs> Next up, we have Ada Perez, futurist, radicist, artist, and storyteller, will be introducing cyborg shamanism as a nonlinear system that explores what it means to be human, the power and impact of collective intelligence, and asks us, what kind of ancestors do we want to be? Ada, I'm so grateful to have met you through this journey. I love you dearly and so happy to get to hear Good to have so many here from you today. Thank you. Thank you, Roxy. The feeling is mutual. Hello, everybody. Um, right, let's see if this works. So, um, as part of this call, systems philosopher Mansour Vakili asked the question, if we're an outcome of such an amazing process such as living conscious systems, then how are we not manifesting it? Maybe the answer lies in the question, what kind of ancestor do you want to be? Cyborg shamanism is a non-linear systems framework that I've been working on for the last six years. It's developed to explore what it means to be human, the power and impact of collective intelligence and the anatomy of transformation and our ability to solve complex problems. The ecological triptych is another systems pattern that I've recognized, is the myth that our linear thinking or the ego is what should be driving us. It's what links colonialism, capitalism, and therefore exponentially compounds um, our relationship and our dis-ease relationship and responsibility to the planet. It maintains that the myth of self-actualization is what we should be striving for. Therefore, th for this project, I'm going to use my framework to create a virtual cave, one like the Kogi tribe used to train their mammoths to attune to a lunar, the earth. During the incubation phase of this program, I've gone from a heady, complex, com complex idea, a weird and wonderful mind map, to creating the narrative and production plan for a five-part, anti-disciplinary, multi-sensory ritual. The, the lectures and the, the sessions were great, but I had wonderful one-to-ones with John and Mansour, and what they said is to get into my body, make it simple, and so that's what I've done. And so this is now going to be an, a, this, a um, five-part antidisciplinary multi-sensory ritual, one that merges and em emerges ancient wisdom, natural systems and indigenous community practices with digital and emerging technologies to move us from I human to we human to kinship with 100% of life. I've been working with my co-founder Marcus um, and I've also been speaking to potential collaborators, world builder Tony Patrick, Paul D. Miller and, and others. So I'm going to walk you through a few of the phases. Phase one, is about leave, ether. From sensory deprivation leads to sensory isolation. So something similar to creating the coggy caves where you get to that point where all you hear is your heartbeat, your own breath. So before everything, there is nothing. Phase two is breathe, which is air, to move from sensory isolation to sensory integration. And as we remember how to breathe and reconnect the body and the brain, that reestablishment that's happened. Th phase three is grow. This is about expanding our kinship to all of life. Phase four is flow, which is water, appreciating that that sense of kinship runs through our whole body, it runs through everything. And we been, begin to ask the question, what kind of ancestor do you want to be? Phase five, the final one is ground, the emergence from the cave. And as Buckminster Fuller says, I live on earth at present and I don't know what I am. I know that I'm not a category, I'm not a thing, a noun, I seem to be a verb an evolutionary process, an integral function of the universe. And so what I want to do is, my call to action is, what I want to do is create this cave with five phases that, create a cave with five phases that enable us, 
sorry, that enables us to go through that process of sensory isolation, to come out the other side and to connect. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for artists and multi-sensory performance artists who can help, who can help with sound, with breath, with dance, with water and with food and taste. Uh, my next step is to create the production line and to actually start to Im Im look for more technologies that can help put some of that together. If you wanna get in touch, here are some details of how to find me and I hope to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Ada. And alas, we shall be better ancestors, better future ancestors through this process. Thank you for sharing the story of your transformation uh, and how getting into your body and keeping it simple has created so much flourishing and blooming within you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Chris Weir, an illustrator, musician, poet, and lucid dreamer. He's working, shifting from a scarcity mindset to one of abundance. Chris, it has been such an honor to see your project develop and flourish. We're so happy to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much, Roxy. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, it's actually my birthday, and this is a wonderful way to spend it. Um, thank you for having me with all these other amazing, amazing folks working on incredible projects. Um, so what I'm looking at is uh, developing a uh, tool that can help folks look at uh, what they have around them in order to create food and meals and recipes, um, as opposed to something that may lead you to um, look in your cupboards and you see that you have random, seemingly unconnected uh, pieces to puzzles you don't know the, you know, where to even start with um, to solve. Um, I'm hoping to help folks link those pieces together with guides um, through this app idea. So, and I'm calling it recipe constellations as constellations can be something that uh, when looked at with a guide, it can make sense of the incredible overwhelmingness of um, possibilities above us and around us. So I'm thinking about students who are working uh, or who are learning from home. Um, so many of those students, 22 million in the US, um, rely on free and reduced price lunches uh, right now. That is definitely different for many of them work, uh, we're learning from home. Um, and that's 40% of the total under 18 student population in the US. Um, I'm also looking at issues of food that is wasted. Um, in the average US household, there's over $1,800 that is wasted on food that is not used or goes bad every year. And um, what that also does is contribute to our landfills and methane emissions and um, CO2 levels in the environment. And so, with looking at what is around us in our cupboards already. Um, I'm hoping to help folks save money and also uh, feel like they have everything they need without having to get tricked by another ad on their phone. So this is um, a quick mock-up of a loading screen for it. Um, and so essentially what I'm looking at, if you have three ingredients um, a can of something, a uh, produce that's about to go bad and something else, can we then pull from um, recipe sites, blogs, chef partners that I'm working with in order to build out different um, options based on how many ingredients you have around you or want to add to them. Whereas one might be a limited build with a few different recipe options. If you add one ingredient to that, there may be many and so on and so forth. Um, again, this can help. I'm thinking of students learning from home. I'm thinking of communities living within food deserts or without easy access to um, many grocery stores and uh, food resources. And just myself and many folks I know who have looked in their pantry and even though there is food there, I don't know what to do with it and therefore I feel like there is nothing to work with. And here are a couple more sketches that I'm working with. 
my timer just went off. So what do I need? I'm looking to work with um, more uh, chef partners, bloggers, people to play with food. I am looking to pull from the creativity of animators. I, I think it is necessary to be working with people who have cultural awareness and dedication to serving many different communities with many different backgrounds, interests, and resources. Um, obviously, I'm going to need some help from folks building out the application itself. And I need some folks to help look at algorithmic um, data uh, design and what we can pull from legally and not. Luckily, recipes are not uh, uh, copyrightable. So anyway, here is how to reach me. If you are interested in talking about any of that, um, I would love to hear from you. And here is a hilarious GIF that somehow I stumbled upon while making the <laughs> last minute touches on this presentation last night um, with someone in food in space. Thank you so much uh, to the Design Science Studio. Thank you to UC Irvine and the Living Systems Collaboratory for having me. Thank you, Chris. That was such a great gift. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you for spending it with us. It's so wonderful to see the progress. This is the first time I've seen the sketches of the app. They're so beautiful and welcoming. Uh, they feel really uh, accessible to everyone and it feels really inviting. So, thank you so much, Roxy. Thank you. Creating more equity in the world through a shift, shift in our mindset. It's so important. All right, friends, we are coming to a break. Now, don't go away for too long because we'll be back in just a little bit. If you've just tuned in, uh, we are coming to you from the Living Systems Art and Design Collaboratory where we are supporting a program of artists, funding them and supporting them to develop their creative projects that are exploring living systems. And we have heard now from 15 artists and we will hear from another 15 artists on the backside of this break. So don't wander off for too long because we'll be right back at 41 minutes past the hour. Exactly. So we hope to see you shortly. Uh, thank you again to all of our partners on this mission. And we are also in deep gratitude to the mentorship of the entire collaboratory and the mentorship team. Without you, this would not be possible. So we hope that you have a good break and we will see you at 41 minutes past the hour. I just realized it said uh, p.m., so 11.41 a.m., so we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Thank you.
Hello and welcome or welcome back. We hope that you have been tuning in. If you're just reaching us now, we hope that you are well and you are tuning in to Artist Talks from the Living Systems Art and Design Collaboratory presented by the Design Science Studio at the Buckminster Fuller Institute in partnership with Hub Ritual and the Emergent Media Design Lab at the University of California, Irvine. This program is providing funding, scaffolding, and support for artists and designers who are working to develop creative projects that are exploring living systems, moving us towards a unified whole. Next up in the docket, we have an amazing multidisciplinary artist. Her name is Stephanie Schwartz. Through the lens of wonder and building new models she creates. And we are so happy to have you a part of the Design Science Studio, the collaboratory, and it has been such an honor to get to know you, your passion and your care for this world. Thank, Thank you, you for creating and welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, should be on my screen. Just go to my screen, please, here. Hold on. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm working on this project, and this is part of this project of creating new models. Stephanie, the yeah. screen share went off somehow. It went off? Yeah. Hold on. Please. It was up before. Can you? Uh, so you you might just want to push reshare. Is that sharing it? No. Yes, that looks great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm working on this part of this project of creating new models new coding. So some of this is about creating conversations and creativity, wonder, alignment, embodiment, and nature. And since this is my life's work, I've met many people that I consider to be thriving systems. People whose life, life um, events have made them their own new systems, and they have been thriving in them and sharing, sharing that. So we'll be calling that information sharing it out it's about frequency light vibration you know things we didn't learn in school but we can give now and teach now and we're going to bring it together and make this like field guide this tangible tactile book and about you know about thriving living systems like some dimensionality because it's been so flat earth thinking so it's like through the lens of wonder it's like a harry Potter magic textbook with video ar links vr everything is full, uh, full spectrum research biomimicry thinking and just this journey so like one of the people on this on this journey is a woman named carrie boyett and she has a project called 13 voices and it's about raising 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 up the uh, frequency of that area in Tennessee that she lives, going back into the Bible Belt and reshaping it and changing it. We already are down there. I've already been down there a few times documenting and creating bubble of ex um, experiences, and bringing creativity to them. And um, it's been beautiful. Like already there's so much, um, just so much great feedback from, from people who, who are now lit themselves they're excited. They're actually painting the town, um, the main street, bringing art and creativity to an area that didn't have it before, an area that has a lot of um, issues with drugs and all kinds of problems because it's like it's been left behind from technology. So bringing that all up to speed so we could share. So that's kind of like the center point, And we're going to wave out from there and spread it. So bringing, uh, bringing incredible teachings from the area that I live in, 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 in the Bay Area, over there, and then spread from there because we know and we want to, we really want to get, um, you know, get the feedback so we can show the evidence. And so it's this gathering of evidence and showing. So things that I need assistance with, you know, would be great to have funding for um, 360 audio um, mobile because all of the interviews going to be in nature and. Um, if there's a um, 
a nature metaphorical writer that can add to these these things, as well as um, as well as um, some organizational with large quantities of content. So thank you very much. And um, through the lens of wonder, uh, thank you. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm working on this project. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Of course. It's so wonderful to have you. And it was really wonderful to have the layered presentation uh, and see through your eyes. So I hope that continued to support the development of this great work. All right. Next, we have Claudia Brenner, an integrator business and digital strategist and systems designer who's working on systems mapping and design and integrated technologies to manage complexity and solve challenges. Welcome, Claudia. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Um, yeah, I mean, earlier, uh, Stephen Bao talked about, you know, compounding disasters and um, I've been imprinted with the same um you know not only do we have pandemic we have the wildfires in california so the day i woke up uh, to see an orange sky with no light had a lot of impact on the project that i'll talk about in a minute but first i'm going to talk about how do we wrangle all this we need to manage and work with complexity um, and the way i've seen to be able to do that is to help show systems and use systems design practices to uh, be able to deal with the complexity and solve complex problems. And we live in a multi-dimensional world and it's not just 3D, it's to the nth. It's always dynamically changing. So that makes it even more challenging. But you know, I, I have to say I'm a, a masochist for gnarly problems. So. And the main thing I'm looking at today is the concept of mapping systems. And here you can see it can be collaborative, it can be on multiple devices, and that's the, the vision for where it's going. Um, why maps? Because, you know, if you read a book, it takes hours. Uh, books are super important, the information's important, even a map is important, but the maps we you know used to use uh, were, they didn't change, they weren't dynamic. So we need these multi-dimensional systems with depth and dynamic um, capabilities. As one of my favorite quotes, pictures are worth a thousand words and maps are worth a thousand pictures by Daniel Amen. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the dynamics here uh, really quickly. Uh, this, believe it or not, was a uh, map that I drew. We presented to Gavin Newsom's uh, chief of staff. It was a complex integrated marketing campaign that was to help the water czar uh, help consumers save 25% of water. Uh, and what's important about this map is not so much to use cartoons or whatever, but I was able to go from more than 40 slides down to six because of this uh, map. And we got uh, approval to go ahead. But uh, I've been experimenting with different ways of doing these kind of maps. And this one I'll come back to another time, but the idea is that you can use a lot of rich media. So videos and animation, um, you know, presentations, dynamic data, art, social media, even uh, transactional campaigns. Um, when you put these interactive systems together and it can be immersive too. So this is just, uh, this is where I want to get this prototype farther along. I, I think I'm the only person who's probably. Um, now quickly, uh, this is another big topic, but uh, one of the things to do is integrate technologies and there's tons of technologies that we can talk about uh, like artificial intelligence, but today, you know, it's not just immersive experiences beyond a deal in this multidimensional world. Uh, so 
one of the things, there's the need for technology. And I love this, this little diagram because it really shows how everything is in more than one place. They're overlapping. And this changes instantaneously in our world. So we have a need to show the context of our system. You know, what are the interrelationships and the interdependencies? And Living Systems uh, in, in the program talks about this extensively. Um, how do we look at these all these interactions and relationships? How do we take uh, information and put it in one place in a single source so that it's preserved like blockchain? And then we show it in multiple ways. It needs to be modular. Uh, you know, talked about fractals, personalized, and I could go on here. But this is actually what's amazing. This is how I see things, and this is what people are doing with hypergraphs. Um, so quickly, I'm going to show two, uh, a little bit, a peek into two uh, developer collaborators that I have I've been working with over time. And uh, I'll just start this real quick. This is uh, a 3D uh, chart of a network of investors. I have a clearer version, but it basically shows with depth. You can see patterns and relationships. And this very information in the way this technology works with WebGL is you can actually now see how it goes into a typical chart system. And this chart will show um, how the different funding series. Now, that's not important in terms of the, what this information is. It could be used for anything. This is another uh, group. Um, that one was kind of is, and this is uh, the ANTS group, uh, this guy, Lucas. Uh, and this basically shows, uh, you're gonna see these green, um, green lines and those are earthquake faults. And then you'll see these uh, squares, those are nuclear reactors. And basically, uh, I wanna get this to be way more visually understandable, but this technology is super powerful. It runs like a game. It also runs in uh, data analytics, tons of data, and then also uh, you can put it in many dimensions. And one of the things important is that if you see these green pins, you'll see that some of the nuclear reactors are placed right where the faults are. So that could be potentially very dangerous. So how do we live with our Earth better? All right. Um, people say, what systems? You can do so many, but some of the ones I look at are cross-industry, they're global, uh, and we need to work with regenerative solutions, living systems, and, you know, disasters is one I'll talk about real quickly, but there are others that you can see right here. Um, oh, my. So I better hurry up. Uh, initial goal is working prototype. And uh, we're looking at surviving wildfires, um, helping people know where to go. Is it safe? Do they need to evacuate? Um, and most people look at their survival and the preparation because that's the reactive mode. But how do we look in recovery and prevention? Some of the topics, uh, this could be a, an immersive environment to look at. Um, I'm looking at collecting data and talking with market research people. And in terms of help, I'm looking to have strategic discussions on how to expedite the MVP, to look at uh, a lot more people, advisors to work with, and some just remote UX video capabilities to do interviews, and even more collaboration on systems mapping. And it would be awesome to get money for the team. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. And for not only talking about, but demonstrating some of these connective systems technologies, really showing the power of uh, what this project can do and the way that you've expanded beyond just mapping wildfires to really showing the potential of this to scale across many living systems and support is an inspiration. And I think we'll be able to really powerfully integrate across many initiatives.
So thank you. Next, we have the pleasure of sharing a video from one of our artists, Carl Sanders, who is a movement designer, director, educator, filmmaker, and UCI dance MFA graduate student. He's working with digital states of living through dialogues in motion. Hope that you enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Carl Sanders and I'm a movement designer, director, and educator. I'm also a UCI MFA graduate student. I'm here today to talk about a project that I've been working on. It's a dance film entitled Existence. I believe that we're all connected and we're all movers. Thusly, we're all dancers in this world, connected by our energy, and also by technology. This piece will premiere next week, December 10th through the 12th at the UCI New Slate virtual concert. So please, RSVP today. I'm seeking funding as well as collaborative artists to assist. Everyone be safe and keep moving. powerhouse and powerful. That was so resonant. Oh, I am blown away by all of these incredible artists. And it is such a pleasure to be with you all here today. We hope that you can tune in to Carl's film and show up for the event next week. We'll share the link for you all in the chat. Next, we have a longtime friend of the Buckminster Fuller Institute and a synergetics whiz, graphic designer, musician, and photographer working to bring synergetics and the work of Bucky Fuller to a world audience through synergetics education. It is such a pleasure to be here with you today and to have you as a part of the Design Science Studio. Thank you, Casey, for all that you do. Thank you, Roxy. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. My name is Casey House, and I'll be presenting a short introduction to a project that I've been working on called Synergetics University. The objectives of this project are to provide an in-depth exploration of synergetic geometry, the work of Buckminster Fuller, and design science, as well as to facilitate conversations and educational experiences, experiences that catalyze humanity's intelligent and considerate participa participation in Earth's ecosystems. The university does this through four inter-accommodating spheres that, off, that form a tetrahedron. These offerings are an online course, 
a textbook, a resource library, and art. And I'm currently working in development of the online course with the Living Systems Collaboratory, and that's what I'll be presenting on today. The online course of SINU is broke in, broken into four quarters or weeks corresponding to the four phases of the tetrahedron. Each week of the course it contains six modules for a total of 24 modules corresponding to the 24A modules of the tetrahedron. Here's an example of the curriculum, the 24 modules, and ideally the course would consist of a team of at least two educators that contribute to a well-rounded offering. This project this project exhibits a living, the living system principles in that it's a self-organizing information network that evolves through feedback and interaction. As students go through the course, they share their experiences, resources, challenges, ideas, etc., so that the next round of students has access to the synergetic web of relationships that came before them. I recently came across a software that aids in this task of data connectivity and relationships called Rome. Rome is an online workspace for organizing and evaluating knowledge. The system is built as on a directed graph, which frees it from the constraints of the classic file tree. Users can remix and connect ideas in multiple overlapping hierarchies, which each with each unit of information becoming a node in the dynamic network. In this, incubation, in, this, in this incubation stage, I've been working on exploring education platforms like Udemy, Skillshare, Teachable, and LearnDash, and have been creating a first draft of the course, which this is a little glimpse of. In order to thrive, this project needs UI or UX design, hosting for online the online course, Roam or alternative subscriptions, collaborators, and funding. If you'd like to know more about this, please visit my website, sinu.com, and please share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Casey. And thank you for creating a web for the world to learn and connect synergetically together. Some of this information is not reaching the world that and the individuals that it should be able to reach. And knowledge should not be a privilege nor something that can that should be kept from people. And creating webs like this for education, for access for all, is something this world so desperately needs to eradicate. Uh, the separation that we have from uh, growing as one living family and making a world that works for everyone. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, in the web of the system uh, and all of these incredible systems, philosophers and systems visualizers, we have next up uh, Laura Ann Edwards, I almost said Wedwards. Laura Ann Edwards, who is an innovation catalyst producer and speaker with a focus on open data, systems thinking, best practices, and humans thriving in space. Uh, welcome, Laura. It's so also synergetic and synchronistic <laughs> to have you presenting right after um, Casey and also Claudia. Thank you for the work that you're doing to help make the invisible visible. Welcome. Well, thank you. Um, I just want to start out with deep gratitude for the rich community and expertise that I personally have found um, with the Design Science Studio and then that next level of deepness um, with the Living Systems Collaboratory. So deep gratitude. I'm working on a project that is about immersive systems data experiences in mixed reality and in CAD. I call it the AHAS project at this point because it's all about revealing adjacent possibilities. So systems are complicated, they're messy, they're extremely noisy, um, and in, 
and many of them are moving uh, incomprehensibly fast. If you look closely at a given system or, or a system map, you, you are never at a completely accurate perspective. Like with this rope, you can always go deeper and you can always pull back out. Living systems are a perfect example of that. The thing I seek to address is helping, um, helping thinkers and solutions makers um, with a new set of ahas or insights around systems to understand what the right interventions might be to affect changes we might seek. Here's an example of transit and people, where, when, and how do these interlocking systems connect or impact each other? When you wanna make change, when, wh what resources do you put and when and where and how? Conventional classic tools of systems thinking are extraordinary for um, extracting, simplifying, uh, but they're not very good at, at looking at everything all at the same time. Our brains can process a whole lot more information but our tools have not caught up to our brains. So what happens if you could actually step inside the algorithm, step inside a, a, a living set of complicated systems and have the ability to slow down, to interact with others and to toggle back and forth layers, depending on the particular insights that you were seeking or variations in your algorithm that you wanted to play with, but to have a very different sense of the speed, the scale, and the perspective. So where am I now? Um, I am specifically at, a, at trying to narrow down an, an MVP. And I, what I'm looking to do is to show, uh, what, what, or show just some of the, of the new insights or new ways to achieve insights um, that could come out of of, of being able to step inside uh, the relationship between at least one organic system and one inorganic system. So examples that I've riffed on are a harbor, lagoon, or reef with the water data paired with uh, the fishing and commercial, the shipping data. The, the people in transit example that I showed previously, but I just a shout out to, to folks in both of these communities. I would love to be um, doing this MVP based on the data and the thing that you are looking at. Because in my mind, it all needs to be, it all needs to make it into projects like this. And so it'd be great to work together. What's the status today? Well, I've, I've had good headway in allies and grants, um, co uh, buy in and interest from some extraordinary mixed reality teams. Um, I have infiltrated this idea into an AI project I'm already working on at Oxford, and I am working very hard uh, on a portfolio of grants. Um, the grants are mostly to uh, pay data scientists and postdocs. Um, I would like to give a special shout out to our fellow cohort member, Claudia Brenner, who you heard just a minute ago. Um, we've been in full mind meld, and she's been just an incredible resource and ally. Um, and I would also like to say that this operates under the larger umbrella of my data oasis project, which is an index um, of the world's open data and a resource hub for sharing best practices and APIs and more across disciplines. So currently, you know, government open data doesn't share with science open data. <laughs> you think they do, but they don't. Anyway, I look forward to your thoughts. And if anybody wants to collaborate on an animatic or uh, this MVP of seeing how these systems can yield new insights together, please give me a call. Thanks. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. And I'm so glad to hear that you and Claudia are mind melding. What a perfect match. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Of course. Happy to be a bridge. Uh, bye and thank you. We are so excited about the work.
that Laura is doing, the work that all of these artists are doing. Uh, and if you're just tuning in, welcome to Artist Talks from the Living Systems Art and Design Collaboratory. Next, we have Natalia Robinson, a longtime friend, uh, an artist, dancer, slow fashion and textile designer and deconstructivist. It is our delight to have you with us today and always. Welcome. Hello, grateful to be here. Thank you. So, thank you. We are an expression of the universe learning about itself. The polarity of the dual nature creates a continuous dialogue that feeds into the timeless dance of life, expanding and contracting, inhaling and exhaling. Buckminster Fuller's Jitterbug Dance is a perfect metaphor for the shape-shifting universe. It's finding its rhythm in its pursuit for homeostasis, expansion, contraction, transformation around a stable equilibrium. It reminds us that nothing is permanent and all is in relational flux. The utilization of this structural principle, tensegrity, feeds into biotensegrity principle and explains that our bones are not in direct contact with each other and are just floating in the tension structure that is created by, by our fascial network. If we experience existence through our body's network, how can we use our body to remind us of the connection to the whole and the feeling of grace that is inherent? Zen practice is the study of the mind, embracing the uncomfort and impermanence of, um, of life. Zen monk's robe is an artifact of this practice. The cut of the kimono-like robe is meant to not to distract the body, but to provide it with ample space to express itself and live. It forces one to be very aware of how one moves and creates a, part and a particular kind of awareness, presence, and hopefully grace. Fashion is a unique form of cultural heritage. It provides an index of not only the style, but social mores of the times. So how can I build in cues for the clothing to participate in this practice of mindfulness and awareness of being a part of a living system? The conceptualization will be described through a garment that is built to target post-production waste. It's going to be using the principle of the Buckminster's um, vector dance equilibrium, which is collapsing in and off, in and out of itself. And I will use this to modulate the sizing of the garment and also provide the experience for the wearer to be able to adapt to the mood shifting and have more of an intimate relationship with, um, with their garment and, and, and things and consumption of clothes as well. So this modulating application uh, is, is part of the garment transformation and also part of the somatic experience of moving in this garment. How, how can the loose fit of this garment inspire me to, to move through space? How the tightening and the collapsing of it will allow me to experience a sense of soothing? Um, and, and a sense of um, relationship to, to my surroundings. Um, so this project uh, has become with, a, with an experiment in mind uh, about using just the geometric synergetics of Buckminster's Fuller's work and creating a garment. And, as it's unfolding to be realized kind of a, a life story and how I am a living system and everything I do and my passions are all fitting into themselves. And 
I am preparing a dance performance to encapsulate the experience of the Tinsegrity principles. Um, a dance that's that's a gratitude to, to the existence, the dance that's the balancing between the left and the right, um, moving from the internal structures of my body. And I will stop with saying that uh, Zen practices tell us, talk about the, that in order to hear the music of the universe, we need to listen, not with our ears, but with our hearts and our whole chi body. In this way, we can really hear what is going on all around us and within us. Then our dance can really be a celebration of union with source that the Asians call Tao. I am very excited to explore the connections of all of these principles. And also um, I'm finding this project to be sprouting in so many directions and becoming so rich. And I'm really excited to plug my project in, in collaboration with others and, and feed, in, feed in on this beauty of us being such an integral part of living systems. Thank you. Thank you, Tashka, for weaving our awareness in our bodies, in our fabric of our future, in with the fabric that we wear, and taking it a step further into an embodied dance that reminds us all that we are part of a nested whole. Mm -hmm. It's been so powerful to see you deeply pay attention to every thread as connected, and that connecting back to the threads uh, that you weave for a future that works for all. So we're so grateful to be along this journey with you. And thank you for your artistry and for sharing with us today. Thank you so much. Great to be here. All right. So we are going to transition to our last group of artists. And so while we shift over to the next group. Uh, we will take a quick pause for about four minutes. So if you need to grab a sip of water um, or a quick bio break, now's a good time. And we will start back again at 23 past the hour. Thank you so much and see you shortly.
If you are just tuning in, welcome. Our next artist presentations will begin in two minutes. Hello and welcome back to today's stream. We are here in case you're just tuning in with artist talks from the Living Systems Art and Design Collaboratory. This collaboratory is presented by the Design Science Studio at the Buckminster Fuller Institute in partnership with Hub Ritual and the Emergent Media Design Lab at the University of California, Irvine. This program provides funding, support, and scaffolding for artists and designers to support the development of their creative projects that are exploring living systems. We are in the end of the first phase, entering the next phase of the collaboratory, and all of these projects are working to support and aid people in the perceiving of our biological, cognitive, social, ecological, philosophical, spiritual, mathematical, political, and technological dimensions of life as a unified whole, as inspired by living systems. Next presenter that we have is actually going to be uh, a video from one of our artists who is indigenous by heritage and is creating an amazing project called the Tender Heart Principle. Amber Bassett is a co-creative strategist, artist, and regenerative economist, building regenerative culture hubs for the omni stewardship of economies, ecologies, and societies at the community scale. We hope that you enjoy. In the Northern American territories we call Turtle Island, indigenous societies carry a practice called the children's fire or circle of law, wherein tribes and council make decisions of self-governance, which honors the vitality of children for seven generations beyond their time. Similarly structured in values, the regenerative footprint is a strategy based on plant growth for enacting climate resilience, reconciliation, reparations, peace programs, and stewardship of the biosphere at the community scale. One such peace program, the Tender Heart Principle, is currently being developed as a template for community-based sacred economy.
This is an empathy-centric hub for artistic and experientially driven regenerative culture for exploring zero waste, elder care, artistic commons, holistic childcare, skill share, organic food sovereignty, and other life-affirming pivots. Using the arts as an engine to incentivize what Joanna Macy would call the great turning. I believe that we are reaching a collective maturation rate as a species, and through resonant experiences of human agency, we can use our relationships, tools, gifts, and capacities to outmodel poverty, heal traumas, and regenerate ecologies. The Tender Heart Principle is currently in the process of being prototyped and seeking collaborators to both feature and support. We are open to skills, promotion, funding, and incubation as well as receptive to synchronous and mutual efforts on the systems level of bioregional care. We are far too capable, far too talented, and far too kind to do anything less than thrive. And our inspired action is everything. Our epiphany of belonging is Mother Nature's ace in the sleeve. There's evidence of our pivoting all around us. We are not cogs in a wheel that spins to the tune of its own mediocrity or duress. We are here truly for the joy of being and to answer the call for the earth, for Gaia as our most precious nest of living relationships. Our time is for the beginning of the beauty of our differences and the end of our indifference, invigorating kinship beyond consumerism and the pathway pattern to redefine it is to be human. That one deserves a big deep breath. I invite you to take a deep breath in. These visions of what is possible are not only a future that we are working to create, but one that we are creating. And by scaffolding and supporting and connecting to this broader movement, we are well on the way. I can speak from experience as a part of this community that there is a deep felt sense of hope alive. And we are so honored to be supporting these creators and to be one part of this greater system of this regenerative movement. So if you are listening in and you want to connect with any of these projects or the greater initiative, please uh, fill out the form and we would love to weave together into this future with you. Next, I introduce to you all Whitney Schmansky, a movement educator, movement designer, working to build awareness in the body in participatory oriented work that includes science, somatics, storytelling, movement, and music. She's working with the fascial system, imagery, and embodiment. Welcome, Whitney. Hello, I'm so grateful to be here. Um, so my project is called IDEOK. It is a fascial system focus, which is connective tissue of our body and imagery and movement-based participatory installation. So I'm looking to create a digital rendi rendition of this with an interactive website and a phone app with AR capabilities. So this will show artistic and scientific images and motion of the fascial, of the fascial system with, and also guiding users with imagery, self-touch and reflection on all of this. So this is all inspired by polar consegrity model and how by now the body is more widely recognized as a bio consegrity model, both macro and in micro ways. And um, through looking at the body as a living system, I've been doing research in fascial system science, mental imagery, living systems, and ideokinesis. 
So ideokinesis was brought into the world by a kinesiologist named Mabel Todd in the 1930s. And she was looking at the idea of how are our ideas, imagery, thoughts, connections affect our movement in a neuromuscular way. And I want to continue with this idea and uh, asking how can imagery and understanding and seeing different ways of how our internal living systems of our body kind of exist, how that um, shapes and creates our perception of our body and therefore a relationship to our environments. So I'm looking at the ideas of introception and exteroception. So mindful practices, we all know is the big buzz. Um, mind, uh, meditation is getting a lot of scientific research. There's many meditation apps and like resources, but I wanna look at this in a more body centric way. How can we create a more embodied collective um, without prioritizing the mind all the time? Um, I'm highly influenced by my teacher, Irene Dowd. So in this image, you'll see a side view of the torso and she, here you can see uh, how anatomical uh, images portrayed and then also an artistic expression. So this is also shown in uh, the work of Eric Franklin and he shows different ways of how imagery can be portrayed visually. And what I want to do is create a fascial living system in motion. So I wanna create something that is 3D like the image on the left, but more in um, an artistic rendition um, like the image on the right here and with the AR capability so that we can see in space and kind of sense, um, have this interaction for a more embodied uh, understanding. I'm really highly influenced also by, there's a recent uh, fascial research that just came out in August that shows the scientific conceptualization on actually how mental imagery affects, can affect our uh, fascial tissue cellularly, physiologically, and psychologically. So most of the mental imagery research has been mostly focused on things such as muscles. So this is like a really new realm and it's really exciting. So my call to action, I'm looking for thoughts, ideas, um, collaborators, um, support and funding to create for me to create a proof of concept. I'm clearly not a graphic artist, I'm a movement artist, so I do need help in that realm. Um, I do have the ideas though. I'm looking to use motion capture as kind of like a basis of all this and the imagery and looking to create 3D, uh, more 3D illustrations and an app that has the AR capability and for UI and UX designers for interactive uh, website. So if any of this interests you, please um, reach out and I'm looking forward to hearing the other presentations. Thank you, Whitney. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much for leaning in and this, you know, the, the fascia of our bodies and how that's related to the fascia of this world. Uh, it is really incredibly important, again, that we are, we tend to be so disembodied uh, as we're, you know, moving so quickly towards progress. Uh, but yes. Truly is one of those uh, beautiful living systems metaphors that everything is always in, in nested holes and uh, we are created to the system of our body. And as we refine and connect with ourselves, we'll be able to be better future ancestors for others. So this work you're doing so important and so inspiring. And we're so happy to have you here as a collaborator uh, and excited to see this continue to flourish. Thank you. Thank you. So happy to be here. Oh, I don't want it to end. Alas, we only have a few more, so stay tuned. All of the other uh, talks are also incredible. And uh, next up, we have Maria Finn, a um, multi-century storytelling writer and chef. We're so, so honored to have you here, Maria. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful to be here. And um, yeah, so my project with the Living Systems Collaboratory is uh, is an app that um, that it's augmented reality. It's not an app. It's actually an augmented reality project. So as you um, as you click onto an image, let's see why. Hang on, give me one. 
one second. Okay. As you click onto an image, this is an illustration of an edible mushroom, a chanterelle, a porcini, a black trumpet. And these images, uh, the great thing about augmented reality is they can be anywhere. They can be in an abandoned storefront. They can be um, a postcard. They could be in an urban garden. But so people will see these and you can download a free app. It's um, ArtViv. And if you hover it over the image, then basically, um, so if you hover your app over the image, then it will click an augmented reality, kind of a video experience. And the experience of being in the woods, uh, kind of a narrative prose poem of going to find this food. Um, one of the, what my work often, I, I encourage people to enter into the wild, enter into nature and food as kind of this visceral direct connection to it. Um, and I call this ecosystem-based eating, this way of following abundance, following seasons, becoming an apex species um, so that we are, we are we see ourselves as part of living systems and food is this way we can do this many times a day really and even if people just go out once uh you have an experience of the forest and it just sort of or you know go get seaweed you it, it it enriches the experience of the ocean or the forest and then your food later so each one of these um images you click on will have sort of a buckminster fuller or a living systems kind of quote or idea with it. So, and this one, 99% uh, of who you are is invisible and untouchable. So this is gonna be about black trumpets and mortality. Um, so not only uh, is, um, we we kind of we tend to die the way fungi die. We're actually much more similar to them than we are to plants. We in fact kind of co-evolve with fungus, and we share millions of years back um, sort of ancestry. And another thing we share is this quote: is this idea of invisible, unseeable. Uh, the the edible mushroom is just the fruiting body of a underground mycelium, a forest network that we cannot see, we can't know about. It is vast and complex and amazing. And we are just starting to learn about it now. Um, so one thing scientists are realizing is that trees do not compete, but rather collaborate. And the forest is communicating through millions of tiny fungus on their root system. Um, and so, so that's, you know, these, this is sort of perfect living systems uh, philosophy that the mushroom exemplifies, the edible mushroom exemplifies. So let's see. Yeah. Um, and so when you click the app, you'll have a video with audio, which I don't have the audio in here yet. And there's been no rain yet. So we do not have many fungus in Northern California. This is sort of the, the delight and the, the, the obstacles of ecosystem-based eating is we have to go by wilderness. So when you click the photo, your illustration, you will go into sort of this video, this act of discovering and the videos and the text will be different for each one. And each one will be under a minute because that's kind of, uh, you know, attention span for people. And so I kind of finish with this idea of food, of bringing things back to the plate. To me, the black trumpets taste like soil and certainty, and that'll sort of fill in with with the other narrative that's that's in there that makes sense. Um, and so, since mushrooms are systems of decomposition, of regeneration, you know, we look around now. Uh, during COVID, we're going into our second lockdown for a month here in California. Um, we see a lot of storefronts are abandoned businesses, particularly the restaurant industry, food industry has been devastated. So I sort of am thinking about how can these images be put places that are kind of symbols of regeneration uh, throughout our cities, you know, as, as we're going to be entering kind of this new time, hopefully come springtime. And so, so my ask is I could use some tech help as far as, you know, putting everything together. Uh, the, the app I'm using is fairly user friendly, uh, but I'm still, I'm a writer and a chef. I'm kind of a hands person. And I'm not a tech person, um, so and I apologize with the PowerPoint here. I thought I had a different version uploaded. Uh, so 
point in point, case in point. Um, but so I'm asking also for community partners for dissemination, um, urban gardens, uh, farmers markets. Uh, there, there can be, like I said, this can even be mailed as a postcard and it's a free app and then it just clicks it. And so this is a way for people, I think, to kind of um, have just a fun sort of short, takeaway about something maybe they didn't know about before. Maybe it it changes how they think a little bit about the woods or about food or about living systems and themselves. Um, so thank you so much and for having me today and for you know including me in this living systems collaboratory. It's been really amazing. So thank you, Roxy. Thank you, Maria. Uh, so fascinating the way that you're weaving uh, the different technical capabilities with connecting us to our living planet and uh, mycelial um, friends, the fruit and body <laughs> of our mycelial friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. This is such an inspiring project and uh, I look forward Thank to you. working with you. Thank you so much, Roxy. Thank you. Next up, we have Alexa X Razma. Raz rhymes with the Wizard of Oz, in case you're wondering. So I was saying it wrong. It's Raz like the Wizard of Oz. They are a transpersonal somatic psychology therapeutic space holder, psychedelic risk reduction leader, embodiment educator, retreat center community founder, and creativity doula. We have had a, a few really wonderful experiences over many years of friendship, playing and being embodied and experiencing so much healing and community. And it is such a delight to see the way that you are bringing that to so many more through your work. Welcome, Raz, and thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'd just like to begin by inviting everyone to do whatever you need to do to become comfortable in your body, whether that's a little bit of shaking or bouncing. Uh, my project is all about embodiment. So please feel into the sense of what your body is calling for. Uh, as mentioned, uh, my academic background is in transpersonal somatic psychology. And I'm really grateful for this platform insofar as I'm able to combine that with my 15 years in extreme states of psychedelic space holding to bring that knowledge to the public. Um, essentially, when I considered my project, I was inquiring as to what keeps us from living as a living system, which is something that I call oneness or pursuing a oneness state. Um, and from my, you know, the disciplines I've studied, I kind of came to two main causes. The primary one, which is probably under development of uh, holistic sense awareness, especially of the body as a whole, which I call soma sense. And the second of which uh, is layers of trauma that are blocking or numbing access to this expanded sense state. So my project, which is called Planetary Play Prompts, seeks to democratize the tools of therapy by distilling this heady, advanced psychological research and theory into accessible prompts. So um, these Planetary Play Prompts are cards, physical cards, and hopefully an app if there's someone out there who's really good on the tech side of things, I'd love to collaborate with you, uh, to create these prompts, these cards that catalyze embodied edutainment experiences of ecosystemic empathy. I'll repeat that one more time. I love alliteration as a writer. So these planetary play prompts are cards that catalyze embodied edutainment experiences of ecosystemic empathy. And I'd like to jump right in and invite those that are drawn to participate uh, into a prompt now. Uh, this is one that I teach really widely and it's called audible co -sign. I'll give an example, it's like this. Ah. 
quite simple. If you're feeling a little shy about your sound, you're also welcome into a variation that I call uh, caressed breathing, which is where you exhale as though you're exhaling love into whatever you're breathing upon, while at the same time recognizing that the external world and the environment is actually coming into you and caressing your lungs and coming into you in a really beautiful way. So there's this mutual caress that's happening with our breath. So this audible cosine, I'll explain sort of what's happening in the nervous system. It's uh, a share, this shared respiration uh, activates a vagal response, which in simple terms is essentially direct communication with our nervous system. And that encourages the engagement of the parasympathetic rest and digest, otherwise known as the mate and relate state, which is the essential basic form from which creative collaborative flow states are born. So essentially this prompt is taking a, a lot of background in psych research and really condensing it into this nourishing nugget that you can take with you. So if we all could co do three cosides together or do the caressive breathing to help us drop in, I'll lead us in that now. Ah. <sighs> Ah. Ah. Mm, thank you. And if you'd like to notice how you feel after participating in that, um, I originally developed this technique uh, which I teach internationally with regards to extreme states of space holding in psychedelic risk reduction, um, because it came to me in a moment of crisis where a client I was caring for was brought to me in an extreme state of distress um, with an activated trauma response. And uh, it led into experimentation into translating this um, psychological research into a simple technique to co-regulate towards calm. So these physical cards, these planetary play prompts, can be used not only in such moments of crisis for emergency grounding and support, but also as a way to open a window into embodied empathy between our internal and external ecosystems. So these planetary play prompts can be placed anywhere um, that you could benefit for a nudge towards oneness. Am I at time? Okay, great. And with prompts or if you're inspired in any way, my email's uh, in my title card. Perfect. Yay. Yay! Thank you for giving us the opportunity to not only hear about that, but fully experience it with you. I felt my whole system uh, soften and mm. reconnect. Thank you. So excited to see all the lives that this will touch. Thank you, Rose. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, we will share with you a message from another visionary polymath in the collaboratory, Matt Severins, who is a socioeconomic systems designer, machine learning engineer, musician, and my beloved. Hope that you enjoy this. So I don't know exactly how to start this because I started this project years ago. It's been um, in progress for a very, very long time. And since it started, I've done a lot to spread the idea and I've done a ridiculous amount of work on it. But in all those years, I haven't really gotten anywhere. So how do I ensure that this next burst of work 
that I do doesn't have the same effect as the past? What action is the best to take to actually manifest this vision? For the uninitiated, my project is a socioeconomic system designed to replace capitalism. More specifically, it takes what works about capitalism, how the profit incentive rewards behavior and seeks to reinvent that. Because I think it's clear that capitalism has dramatically reshaped the landscape of the planet. And it's done so through a system of reward. People's actions are actively shaped by the need to earn money to simply live within society. So if you want to see the same scale of planetary transformation, but in a positive direction, you need to have a reward system that actually rewards long-term collective well-being and not just self-serving behavior. You need a token that people value as much as money, but the earning of this token requires helping others, such that we are actively quantifying mutual aid. Because what the profit incentive does is it quantifies self-serving behavior. So at the heart, it's a very simple idea. Reward people who help others. The implementation, however, to make such a system work well is complicated. And spreading complicated ideas is hard. I understand deeply that the dissemination of ideas requires attention, but accessing that attention is challenging. I've written a 100-page white paper detailing how to build such a system. I've released hours of YouTube videos explaining specifically which problems are at the root of our current social tension and what specifically can be done to fix problems like misinformation and radicalization online. I have the expertise. I've worked in system design, fraud, knowledge representation, psychology, communication, and machine learning. But... I am simply unsure how to get this idea into people's minds. So I think in a call to action, what I really need is just to have others reflect upon the media that I've already produced and created such that I can create new, better media that better speaks this truth. Because if I can't convince people to just consume the media that I have already put out there, and instead have people want me to personally explain it to them. I am only ever going to reach one person at a time. There has to be the production of media that many people can consume at once, that many people find interesting, that many people find entertaining. And I do not know how to create that. I do not know how to motivate other people to create that. What I know certainly won't work is to take a traditional route in form a, a company or a nonprofit that operates on the conception of money in itself. Because if you in, need to motivate people to work towards the replacement of an incentive system with that incentive system that you're trying to replace, you will never achieve the transformation you seek to create. Because inherently those who are working towards that are less motivated by this new system than the one that is already in place. So the proper route is the production of art, is the production of media, such that a message like this is amplified outwards to the masses and many can take action at once to build it together as one people. collaboration instead of competition, rewarding a world that actually supports people who help others instead of competing for that. And the lessons that we learn from our planet, how can we embed those into our systems? This is the work of our generation, the regeneration. And now I introduce to you all our final presenter for today, Umayr Zia Malik, an architect and technologist who is a delight and wonder and has created so much already in the Design Science Studio and in the Collaboratory. Thank you so much, Umayr, for your care and for the great work of bringing living systems and the blueprints that it provides to the world. Welcome. Thank you so much, Roxy. Um, so, we have come a long way in learning from the living systems and applying that knowledge in technology. Uh, but three major uh, milestones 
uh, in my opinion, are uh, the first one being living systems as mechanical devices, efficient machines. Leonardo da Vinci is the leading uh, individual in that uh, paradigm. Uh, then there's the, the next big milestone came with the material ecologies. Uh, that's Neri Oxman. Uh, I have arranged them in, in, in an order of ideas and the complexity of ideas. Uh, so, and finally, we have uh, Sir Richard Buckminster Fuller, and his focus is on the integration and the interrelationships of different systems. So, uh, in order to mimic nature today, uh, if you look at the horizontal line, you'll see that we need to, uh, we have come at this cro crossroads junction uh, where when all of these systems come together in in a combined in a very particular way then a system becomes alive and if we want to mimic that process in technology then how do we make technology alive so that was the question and if you look at the vertical line it shows that uh, the scope of uh, uh, the scope and the limitations of technologists and inventors these days is also very important for uh, it's also an important aspect we need to locate ourselves in terms of our uh, contribution so uh, I basically um, wrote down this research question for myself that if everyday technologies get inspired by the living systems uh, what would be the future of him what would the future of humanity look like so first I needed to design the technologies inspired by living systems small technologies and then I had to bring them together to create to project an image of the future uh, one technolo technology at a time. Uh, let me just suck it. Okay, so I'm just sharing with you uh, some of the images that I'm, some of the projects, uh, individual nature gadgets that I'm designing, then I'll later on combine them together. For example, this one was, um, uh, this is a space scraper inspired by th this macroalga uh, that can sustain tremendous amount of pressure, atmospheric pressure. Uh, if you want to look into the details of this nature gadget, you can visit the website naturegadget.com. Uh, this is another small technology. That's a building facade inspired by the bull kelp uh, that manages uh, both uh, its response to the water currents and it moves in a way that it distributes sunlight down to the lowest uh, to the blades in the low, lowest deepest tier. This bridge is inspired by the uh, aquatic bacteria, which excretes glue, uh, which is one of the strongest naturally occurring materials, and it gets stronger with time when it comes into contact with water. So it is a foundationless uh, bridge. Another project, inundated deep sea uh, habitat, uh, inspired by the fire ants bridge. And then I brought these technologies together and made this visualization. And if you see one, two, three, four, these are those nature gadgets. And there are seven, eight other gadgets in this image as well. So I put them together to develop this image. Uh, instead of just uh, visualizing it, uh, I try to make small technologies and craft it. So I'll be making similar images. And uh, there are many. Um, uh, me, uh, many media for us to experiment with. Topia is one. It could be a publication. And I'm looking for prototype uh, people in the prototyping industry. So thank you so much. I'm out of my time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Umar. Wonderful, important work. And Roxy, what do you think? We're um, we now seem to have uh, with Umar, uh, Umar's uh, really exciting and important uh, consolidation of these ideas in a theoretical framework. We've reached the end of our amazing group of presentations. Thank you so much, Umar. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And yes, you're right, John, we have. And what a day it has been. Uh, it is wonderful to not only hear, but to see these visions and to truly feel into what we can create together. Um, I feel compelled to share a little a bit of prose, we'll say. Uh, we, have, we have an upcoming artist salon for the Design Science Studio, and the intro of the invitation is, is so sweet and poetic, and it feels really relevant to a way to close this conversation today. 
have you heard? Everything is changing and there's no turning back. As we dive deep, the idea of separation from nature evaporates. Nothing is destroyed, just transformed. Allow yourself to dissolve and bloom like the mycelial interconnected network sporing out of the process of permanent transformation. The metamorphosis has commenced. And as our friend Bucky said, well, there's nothing in the caterpillar that tells you it's going to be a butterfly. And that, that comes to us from, from Nicolas, uh, who is a part of our team. And, uh, and we invite you all to continue with us. We have a few exciting events to share with you now. Um, and this one is the Dissolve and Bloom event that's happening on Saturday, December 19th. And you'll get to dive into some of the hearts and minds of the Design Science Studio's 144 inspiring multidisciplinary international creators through an immersive and interactive world that will expire, inspire exploration and shift the way you relate to the potential of online events and art. So we hope that you can join us and passing the mic to you, John, uh, to share more about the upcoming event with UCI. Thank you so much, Roxy. Um, in addition to being a professor at UC Irvine, I'm an intermedia artist and I have the great honor to be one of the co-founders of the Living Systems Collaboratory. I'd like to share with you some thoughts from a book that was published almost 50 years ago, but the some of the thoughts in it are as fresh and maybe even fresher now than the day it was published. This is a book called The Tao of Physics by the physicist and philosopher Fritjof Capra, who points out that some of our, and this was half a century ago, points out that some of our most advanced and thoughtful scientists have discovered and advocated a paradigm shift, a very important paradigm shift that takes us from thinking in terms of structure to thinking in terms of process. And for the scientists, this insight takes us to an understanding that process is primary. Now, for artists, I'm not sure that this is such a revolutionary discovery, but, but bear with me for a minute. These scientists understanding that process is primary started to realize that every structure we observe is the manifestation of an underlying process. Going back to Einstein's work of over 100 years ago, his relativity theory helps us to understand that mass is a form of energy. Or maybe the corollary can be that these subatomic particles are not made of any material stuff. Some subatomic particles are patterns of energy. So when we observe them, we never see any substance. We never see any fundamental structure. What we observe are dynamic patterns that continually change, shift, and morph into one another. In other words, and these are Capra's wonderful words, he sees these processes as a continuous dance of energy. I love that, a dance of energy. Systems philosopher and patron of the Living Systems Collaboratory and uh, a colleague of Fritjof Capra, Mansour Akili, helps us to understand that this dancing energy can be conceived as particles engaging with one another to create self-organizing nonlinear networks. So I would invite us all to use this as a metaphor to see ourselves as particles, to find ways that we can engage with one another, that these self-organizing nonlinear networks are in some ways the inevitable outcome of this notion that structure really is driven by or supported by or enhanced by a notion of process, that process is primary and that we are such integral elements of that process. And to that end, I'd like to share with you um, uh, an event that's uh, coming up at UCI. Well, it's at UCI, but um, it's fully online, so you can visit it from wherever you are. It's called New Slate. 
And it's a dance concert that features the work of our wonderful uh, choreographers that are in the MFA dance program at UCI, three of whom you heard from today and three of whom will be presenting in this concert. So um, you will um, hear more uh, or you will see more of what you heard about today from Brandy Lee, Carl Sanders and Whitney Shemansky. Um, and I will tell you right now, their work is transformational and wonderful. And it's accompanied, as you, as you can see on this slide, by the work of their of other uh, wonderful MFA choreographers in their cohort. So uh, this link here, UCI Dance Online, is the place you go to watch the concert. Um, it's streaming, not sure why the time isn't in this, but it's at 8 p.m. Pacific on December 10th to 12th. And we'll also be circulating that information to this network. So um, definitely encourage you to check that out and see a bit more of the work of these wonderful creators. And uh, so speaking of wonderful creators, Roxy, we had uh, presentations from really quite an amazing cross section of 27 artists and creators of various descriptions. Um, I want to express my heartfelt thanks to you, Roxy, to Nico, to Faith, to the entire team that's worked so hard to pull this together. Um, as I've said multiple times to the members of the collaboratory, but I'm happy to reiterate this here for the benefit of everyone, this all is an experiment. None of us have ever done this exact thing before. And how many times can we say that in our lives? Only really when we are in the moment of creation. So thanks everybody for your time, for your attention. Look forward to seeing you at upcoming events and uh, please reach out. Thank you, John. And thank you all for tuning in. We hope to collaborate with you soon. All our best.